The shift to distance learning the spring was a challenge for all students, but it was especially difficult for students with special needs. In a recent survey, many parents of special needs children reported they aren't getting the support they need. Minnesota has yet to make any final plans concerning school in the fall. Tonight, I talked with Dan Morgan, president of Groves Academy, about, about how parents can advocate for their students. All right, we'll start with the first question, Dan. What made the transition to distance learning uh, so difficult for students with special needs? Well, as you can imagine, education got flipped up on its head this spring when the pandemic hit. And one of the key things that happened, especially for students with special needs, certainly true for all students, was that it really challenged the relationship that they were very used to having with their teacher and that their families were very used to having with their school. All of a sudden having to change from being in school every day and seeing your friends and seeing your teacher and being in the classroom and understanding the routine of the day totally shifted. And for kids who learn differently, that was a real challenge. I imagine you said routine and, and shaking things up can be pretty drastic for them. So what can parents maybe do to kind of advocate for their students uh, as they continue on in this process? Well, there are uh, many, many things that parents can do to advocate for their children, but I generally tend to see, as I think about kids who learn differently, there are three key things that I would say that kind of override a number of the other things in terms of being able to advocate for their students. And the first thing that I would say is really about that relationship. Parents can have a real impact on how the relationship is maintained uh, between home and the school. Uh, so one of the things that I would really offer for parents to do is, when possible uh, this summer uh, or early into the school year, depending on what school looks like, mm -hmm. to really get in touch with the teacher and the school and find some way to develop a partnership uh, and some clear communication. And that's building that relationship is really important. And then parents can understand how the year will unfold. And then I understand, you know, probably don't want things to change up too much. There's something to be said about consistency, right? There's a huge uh, part to be said for consistency, especially for students with special needs who have some sort of learning challenge. The consistency of what to expect every day, sometimes even every hour when they're in classroom is really important. Because of the way that they learn, knowing what the routine is going to look like and knowing what there is, what is expected of them from moment to moment or a class to class or even the type of work that they're going to be doing is really, really important. And if there is distance learning that will be happening this year, parents, if they have that relationship established, can then connect with the teacher and understand what is the schedule going to look like? When are they going to be expected to do certain types of subjects or certain types of materials and so on? And what can be expected of the parent as well to help maintain both the relationship and the consistency of instruction, especially if there's some of it being done at home. And I've heard of this, it's called the multi-sensory approach. How does that maybe specifically apply to uh, children with special needs? Yeah, it's a great point, great question. Uh, well, certainly with, with students with special needs, is they do require generally a different approach to teaching and a different method of learning. And multi-sensory means that you're engaging all of their different sensory systems in the process of learning. That means that they, they're really hands-on. Uh, they're connecting the hands-on work to what they're doing visually and what it is that they're listening to. Uh, and so making sure that you have all of those things in place is really important. And so in a distance learning model, uh, one of the things that will be really important is that the parents and the teachers in the school can connect to make sure that materials that are used for multi and sensory instruction can perhaps find their way home or that parents know what it is that they're supposed to be using. Groves Academy, tell us a little bit more about how the schooling is there relative to how kids with special needs are able to learn and, and, and prosper, really. We've been uh, Groves Academy for 47 years. Uh, and it, the school was started by an intrepid group of parents working with their own children who had learning challenges and learning differences. Uh, and the type of student that we work with typically has a diagnosis of something called dyslexia or ADD, ADHD. They've got reading challenges and some other challenges in how they learn. Uh, and that's what Groves is known for and it's been known for for quite a long time. Uh, but you may not know that Groves also has two other really important components to what we do as an organization. One of them is a learning center where we offer a diagnostics and assessments to really understand sort of the deep challenges that a student might be facing and get to know them individually. We also offer tutoring and a summer program and speech and language therapy. Uh, and then the third component 
is where we take what we've learned at Groves over 47 years of working with just students just like this, and we bring that great literacy instruction out into schools in the Twin Cities. The pandemic itself is such a fluid situation, especially with what it means for schools uh, coming in the fall. What do you think all this means for the future of education? Well, I wish I could tell you exactly what it means, but one of the things that I do know is that while there are a lot of challenges, I believe it's a huge opportunity for us as educators to examine how we actually deliver education to all students, certainly students with special needs, but students in general education. You know, education was, has been designed the same way for about 200 years. And I think this pandemic is a really scary and challenging situation, the type that we needed to actually decide to think about how we might change how we deliver education to students. And I'm really excited for all the opportunities that, that may come along. Things as simple as adjusting schedules and incorporating things like distance learning uh, to something that much wider that could be much more systematic. For more on distance learning in Minnesota, just go to WCCO.com.